Hey everyone, my name is Venti and let me tell you something. If you haven't played Inscription, consider yourself very lucky because going into this game completely unspoiled was one of the most memorable gaming experiences I've had in a while and for that exact same reason I can't just tell you everything about it. Sure, we're going to talk about most elements in the game and of course how it runs and controls on the Switch, but in terms of the story I'm going to be sidestepping a little bit. Sure, it may be a little bit different, but hopefully I can give you a pretty good understanding whether you're going to like this game or not. And spoiler alert, I think you're going to love this. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. So, first of all, what is Inscription? Well, it's a genre-bending card game that has deck building at the core of its gameplay and has a light horror setting. It incorporates things like escape room puzzles and many roguelike deck building elements, but don't be fooled. This isn't your average Slay the Spire. Because even though I believe the card game at the center of Inscription is so well made it could very well stand on its own, this game isn't about the endless runs, but rather uses that same mechanic as an artifact to advance the story, and act as a fundamental part to its very meta-narrative. Now, concretely, what that means is that every run will actually feel like a step forward, giving you pieces of lore and maybe guiding you on what your next objective should be, as well as, in typical roguelike fashion, giving you access to new cards for future runs. From the very start of the game, and I mean from the very main menu, you get the feeling that something is perhaps wrong. Then, as you actually start the game, you are thrown into the tutorial, where a mysterious shadowy figure teaches you the ins and outs of the card game Inscription. Basically, every card has attack and HP values, and also a cost, which mostly has to be paid by sacrificing other creatures. You play this card as minions on the board against an AI opponent who does the same thing. It's kind of asymmetrical though, as your opponent isn't constrained by paying any costs, but plays in a mostly scripted fashion. Minions on the board will automatically deal damage to opposing ones at the end of turn, and if left unopposed they will attack the opposing player instead, putting that many damage counters on a tipping scale which tracks the score. Strangely enough, these damage counters are actually human teeth. It's the little things, right? So, tip the scale enough and you are victorious and proceed to the next encounter. Lose and you'll extinguish one of your two candles which are basically your run's lives. You lose both of your candles and it's game over, your run ends. At which point you will get the chance to add a card to the pool, which can appear in future runs. There are several encounter types which are representative of spaces in a board game, where your opponent, who is also the narrator, acts as a sort of dungeon master, impersonating the various characters and bosses you encounter. Now, that is the main gameplay mechanic which the game revolves around, and even though quite simple, it is sufficiently nuanced to give it the depth it needs to keep you engaged for the length of the game. There is a feeling of constant back and forth made even more apparent with the actual scales being tipped. You have to plan ahead to get the most out of your minions, both in offense and defense, being that they are also your main resource, since sacrificing minions is the most common cost to play more cards. But you know what doesn't have a cost? Liking and subscribing. If you enjoy the video, of course. If not, go ahead and leave a dislike to let me know either way. Anyway, all minions can also have abilities which can cause them to more easily do direct damage to your opponent or make them much more harder to kill. Now, just like in many other roguelike deck builders, every now and then between encounters you will get the chance to add, remove or enhance cards from your deck, grab one use items or even acquire totems which will passively improve certain cards. In between runs, or at any point in which there isn't a battle really, you are free to stand up from the table and explore your surroundings, which will present you with all manner of puzzles which may not be solvable at that very moment, and you might need to come back to them after you uncover the clue in a later run. And even though I started the game feeling very lost, the game does an excellent job at giving you a notch in the right direction of what to do or where to start looking. I won't lie though. There were a couple of times where the answer wasn't so obvious for me and the discovery felt more like the result of trying everything rather than intuitively figuring it out. But in the end, those were few and far between. 
With every round feeling like meaningful progress in the overall story and the upgrade based nature of the roguelite genre, the pacing felt good throughout. Ok, so without going into spoilers, that's as far as I'm gonna go in terms of what the gameplay loop is. But do keep in mind, it's not really that which will keep you hooked, but the overall evolution of the game in terms of both gameplay and story. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is that this roguelike deck builder is just a vehicle through which we traverse and interact with the game. Now, in terms of controls, I'm very sad to say that there aren't any touch controls implemented, which is a real bummer, especially in a card based game. But aside from that, I felt that the game controlled just fine. It can be a little bit clunky on the exploration parts, and especially when trying to select specific objects, but do keep in mind this was originally designed with PC in mind. As far as accessibility options go, there isn't much really. Just turning off the flicker and screen shake effects. It also would have been nice to have a text size adjustment, especially for the Switch Lite players. Let me tell you something, back when this game came out on PC, I was put off by its apparent theme and presentation, from the dark atmosphere in both a literal and figurative sense, to the monochromatic woodland creatures, it just didn't pull me in. Yeah, I guess I just couldn't see myself enjoying, say, Hearthstone or Slay the Spire with that aesthetic. And I couldn't be more wrong, they really did a great job at balancing that unsettling tone with some humorous ones which evokes that carnival of the macabre feel. In execution, once you add everything together, it all blends perfectly, from the graphics which are somewhat retro-inspired, with the gloomy dark atmosphere with high contrast here and there, and also the music and sound effects do a great job at making you really enter this world, from the clinking sounds of the damage counters hitting the scale, to the hollow sound your board game piece makes as it travels the board, making you feel just a little bit more immersed. There is no voice acting in this game, but I don't know, I don't feel it's inherently a negative. Every character makes a sound according to their personality when they speak. And for instance, much of the game's dialogue comes from the narrator, who makes this kind of deep ominous sound that maybe even benefits from not being spoken by a human. It just adds to his otherworldly persona. As far as the performance, I didn't have any issues here. The game ran great on both TV and handheld mode, and I have to say, this does look great on the OLED, due to the abundance of blacks making the bright contrast pop up much more. I'm also happy to say I didn't encounter any real bugs or glitches and I had an overall smooth experience. The game is 20 US dollars or your local equivalent, and it took me around 16 hours to beat, which your mileage may vary. But I feel for the amount of content and most importantly, the quality of it, it's well worth the money. Oh man, I really enjoyed this game. I did hear a bunch of great things about it, but something about the aesthetic just kind of put me off. But really, if anything about this slightly piques your interest, even if you're not into card games, you gotta give this game a try. And if you did tell me about it, did you manage to go in spoiler free? Was it worth it? And more specifically, how would you rate this? Tell me about it in the comments below, let's make this into a conversation. Anyway guys, that's it for this video and I'll see you guys next time, bye! Oh,